Over the course of the ages, we have made countless discoveries that have improved the quality of our life and have helped us understand the world around us. Now, it's very difficult and pretty impossible actually to rank the importance of the discoveries that we have made over time. But one thing definitely is for sure, some of them have literally changed our lives. Either way, here are 10 of the biggest scientific discoveries in the world. Hey guys, welcome back to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and I have a pretty exciting episode, especially for you science buffs out there coming right up. But before we get into this episode, leave a like on this video if you love learning. And also if this is your first time here at FTD Facts, do yourself a favor, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. That way you won't miss any of our daily episodes. Okay, so starting off with the first discovery at number 10, we have penicillin. Now if Alexander Fleming, who is a Scottish scientist, had not discovered penicillin, which were the first antibiotics in the year 1928, we would probably still be dying from things like stomach ulcers, as well as strep throat and scarlet fever, staph infections, Lyme diseases, all of that. But actually, bonus fact, you know, I'm actually allergic to penicillin, so if I take it, I could literally just drop dead. So I'm probably better off getting one of these diseases that I just mentioned than actually taking these antibiotics. But either way, there's no doubt that penicillin has been a game-changing lifesaver more than people even realize. Penicillins are actually a group of antibacterial drugs that attack a wide range of bacteria. Now, they were the first drugs of its type that doctors used, and drugs in the penicillin class work by indirectly bursting the bacterial cell walls. And they do this by acting directly on the peptidoglycans, which play a very important role in structuring bacterial cells. Now, peptidoglycans create a mesh-like structure around the plasma membrane of bacterial cells, and then it increases the strength of the cell walls and prevents external fluids and particles from entering into the cell. So penicillins disrupt this whole process. And our number nine brings us electricity. Now, the life-changing discovery of electricity is attributed to the English scientist Michael Faraday. And his main discoveries include the principle underlying electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism, as well as electrolysis. Faraday's experiments also created the first generator, which was a forerunner of the huge generators that produce our electricity today. Electricity is the flow of electrical power or charge. And electricity is both a basic part of nature as well as one of the most widely used forms of energy. And it's pretty unique because electricity that we use is actually a secondary energy source because it's produced by converting primary sources of energy such as coal, natural gases, nuclear energy, solar energy, and wind energy into electrical power. And electricity is also referred to as an energy carrier. And this means that it can be converted to other forms of energy such as mechanical energy or even heat. And primary energy sources are renewable or non-renewable energy, but the electricity that we use is neither renewable nor non-renewable. The discovery at number eight is gravitational waves. Gravitational waves proves Einstein's theory of general relativity. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity states that space and time are unified into one continuum, space-time. Objects in the universe, no matter their size, warp space-time as they move, creating ripples known as gravitational waves. Until recently, however, that theory was just that simply a theory. But new technological advancements allow astrophysicists to measure the massive gravitational waves created by huge objects in deep space. Usually these come from black holes and neutron stars millions and millions of light years away, so their waves are incredibly faint by the time they even reach Earth. But speaking of that, we have to go on to the discovery of the theory of relativity. Encompassing two interrelated theories by Albert Einstein, special relativity and general relativity. This theory of relativity, which was published in the year 1905, transformed theoretical physics and astronomy during the 20th century, superseding a 200-year-old theory of mechanics created primarily by Newton. Now, this theory became the foundation of much of modern science as we know it. Moving on now to number six, we have the periodic table. So back in the year 1869, there was a Russian chemist by the name of Dmitry Mendeleev, and he noticed that when arranged by 
high atomic weight, the chemical elements lined up to form groups with similar properties. With this knowledge, he was able to create the first periodic table, which was one of the most important discoveries ever in chemistry. Now the periodic table, also known as the periodic table of elements, is organized so that scientists can quickly determine the properties of individual elements, such as their mass, their electron number, as well as the electron configuration, and their unique chemical properties. Now metals reside on the left side of the table, while non-metals reside on the right side of the table. Halfway into this episode, at number five, let's talk about the theory of evolution by natural selection. Now this one has become a debatable topic and it's been one for years with many people not even considering it as a science. But regardless of where you are on the belief spectrum, there's no doubt that this one has definitely changed the world of science. Inspired by the observation he made on the second survey voyage of the Beagle between the years 1831 and 1836, Charles Darwin began to develop what later became known as the theory of evolution by natural selection, which is a key mechanics of evolution. And the theory has two main points, and this is according to Brian Richmond, who is a creator of human origins at the American University of Natural History in New York City. He says, all life on earth is connected and related to each other. And this diversity of life is a product of modifications of populations by natural selection, where some traits were favored in an environment over others. And this theory, by the way, is sometimes described as survival of the fittest, but that can actually be misleading that term survival of the fittest. When it comes to the theory of evolution by natural selection, the term fitness refers not to the organism's strength or its athletic ability, but rather it refers to the ability to survive as well as reproduce. Number four brings us scientists who have successfully edited the first human embryo ever in the United States. Now this was in July 27th of 2017. Researchers in Portland, Oregon, they achieved a significant breakthrough in gene editing technology. Taking advantage of the revolutionary gene editing technique, CRISPR, a gene linked to heat conditions was successfully deleted from a human embryo. Moving on now to number three, scientists discovered an alien planet that's the best candidate for life as we know it. So on April 19th, scientists at the European Organization for Astronomical Research, or the ESO, found the best candidate for extraterrestrial life so far. Now this super earth is named LHS 1140b and it was found in the habitable zone of a dim star 40 light years away from earth. It receives about half as much sunlight from its star, the LHS 1140, as the earth does from the sun. So I know there's been a lot of talk recently about us colonizing Mars and Mars being the next place for human beings to live because let's face it, sometimes we treat the earth really, really, really bad. Who knows how long it's gonna last. But hey, this one may prove as a better contender than even Mars. Next up at number two, I wanna talk about the scientists who are one step closer to growing human organs in pigs. So scientists at the Salk Institute in California, they said that they're one step closer to being able to grow human organs inside of pigs. In their latest research, they were able to grow human cells inside of pig embryos, which is a small but promising step toward organ growth. But why would anybody want this research done in the first place? Well, you see, scientists say that it could help with studying disease and help develop different drugs. It could also be a way to help with human organ donation as well. And finally, number one, this one, definitely a game changer, DNA. So many people believe that American biologist James Watson, as well as English physicist Francis Crick, were the ones who discovered DNA back in the 1950s. But in fact, it was first identified in the late 1860s by a Swiss chemist named Friedrich Meischer. And then in the decades following Meischer's discovery, other scientists carried out many research studies that helped us understand how organisms pass on their genes and how the workings of cells are actually governed. DNA has even come in handy where people can actually mix DNA and produce a child with certain eye colors and certain characteristics. And it's also been a game changer when it comes to crime because if it wasn't for the discovery of DNA, a lot more people would be behind bars 
than there currently are. All right guys, so that was a look at 10 of some of the biggest scientific discoveries in the world. Of course, this was not an exhaustive list because there are billions of discoveries that have contributed to our world and have changed the way we live drastically. But anyways, thanks for joining me here on FTD Facts and learning with me. I'd love to know your thoughts and comments about anything that I shared in this episode down below. And before I get on out of here, just like to let you know that my social media links are below so you can follow me over there as well. And I do have a video coming up at the end screen that I definitely don't want you to miss. So stick around for that. Tap the annotation once you see it, it'll take you straight to it. Other than that, guys, it's been awesome hanging out with you. Like I said, until the next episode, my name is Leroy Kenton and I'll see you all real soon.